What are you doing? Looking up the Hotel Monte Vista. Do you think we're gonna get scared at all? No, I'm not too sure. I guess we'll see. Hotel Monte Vista in Flagstaff, Arizona is one of the most haunted hotels in the United States. I've had friends stay in here that will not stay in here anymore. Really? Yeah. This is the most cited room for paranormal activity by a long shot. So you're probably wondering why we're at this specific hotel in Flagstaff, Arizona. Well, this is actually considered to be one of the most haunted hotels in all of Arizona. What makes it so haunted is the amount of deaths that occurred here, specifically on floor three in room 305. Which room 305 is the room that we're currently in. Before we show you the room, before we show you the hotel, let us explain what happened in this room and other things that have happened throughout the hotel. Now in room 305, there was an elderly woman who actually lived in here. She would sit in a rocking chair, which is actually over to my left, and just sit in it for hours looking out the window at, well, no one really knows what she was looking at. It's rumored that it was almost as if she was waiting for someone to come back. Ultimately, she did end up dying in this room, and rumor has it, in this rocking chair. If you're here, move the rocking chair. Now, some things that reportedly happen in this room is that this rocking chair will move on its own, that there'll be tapping coming from the closet, and even that lights will turn on all by themselves. And that is the freaking room that we are in right now. Now another very haunted room is actually the room that's right next door to this one, 306. So in the 1940s, two prostitutes were murdered in that room and thrown out of the window. It's said that they're still haunting that room to this day. People who stay in there feel like someone's watching them from the corner of the room. And there are a couple of reports that they're particularly hostile towards men. Which is not good for me because we're literally neighbors with that room. <laughs> Downstairs on the first floor in the 1970s, three bank robbers who actually robbed a bank nearby stopped by the cocktail lounge right after doing that to grab a couple drinks to celebrate. Now one of them actually turned out to be shot and he bled to death downstairs in that cocktail lounge. This is the location of where the infamous uh, bank robber, rumored to have sat right here with his three friends and then died like right here by this pillar. How'd he die? from a gunshot wound. Now reports that come from that cocktail lounge say that glasses and bottles fly off the shelves and smash onto the floor, that people feel hands touching them constantly in the lounge, and specifically where he died, do people feel cold spots and other really weird feelings. Then we have the meat room. The meat room is room 220, where a really strange man lived. He was said to hang meat from the chandeliers, and he actually ended up dying in that room. 
but his body wasn't found until three days later. A maintenance man reportedly went into the room, did what he had to do, left. Lights were off, TV was off, everything was clean. Coming back in, everything was back on. TV was full blast, the lights were on, and the linens on the bed were ripped apart. And at nighttime, when people sleep in that room, it's reported that they feel hands touching them. Now, other occurrences that happen in the hotel are people reportedly see a dancing couple, a bellboy that can be seen roaming the hallways, to even a crying baby that can be heard coming from the basement. Quite a few celebrities have stayed here, such as John Wayne, Clark Gable, Anthony Hopkins, yes, that Anthony Hopkins, to even Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England, which is freaking ironic that he stayed in a haunted hotel knowing the role that he played in Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> this is God. But with that being said guys, that is why this hotel is so freaking haunted and why we wanted to stay here. This is honestly beyond anything we've done up until this point. Way more haunted than San Carlos, way more haunted than the domes. This is on a whole other level. But with that being said, let's just go ahead and show you guys room 305. All right guys, so we're gonna give you a tour of the room. This is the closet where people say they hear a lot of knocking coming from at nighttime. Nothing in the closet besides some hangers. It's pretty small. And me. <laughs> also, real quick, last time at San Carlos, we had our cameraman Alfredo with us. Unfortunately, we do not have him this time. He will always be with us in spirit because I brought him along <laughs> in, a little, in a little paper. Hi Alfredo. He may not be with us physically, but he's with us in spirit. Next up, we have the bathroom. Pretty nice little bathroom, to be honest. It's nice and small, clean. That's me. So then over here, we have the two beds because this is a two bed room. Now, what's really interesting about this room is the rocking chair here. This is the rocking chair where people say it moves on its own. The spirit of the elderly woman still likes to sit in it. I've been eyeing that chair all throughout our time here and I don't want to sit in it. Okay, I'm just going to try it out now and then I'll try it out again later when it gets more into the night. So... How does it feel? Kind of feels like a rocking chair. So this is potentially the view that she had when she was here. You know, it's a pretty nice view. So guys, that is the room. We also have this little dresser over here. This room is definitely a lot bigger than the one we had at San Carlos. It's more spacious. We have a better view. This is gonna be pretty weird waiting until nighttime to be in here because right now it feels calm, but I don't know how it's gonna feel later on. Right now we have the comfort of like the busy streets, the lights, the open curtains. Now, we're gonna go explore the hotel, show you other rooms that are haunted, and other cool little locations of this hotel. So, let's go do that. Walking down to the right, we have this hallway. It's tiny mirrors, what's the point? Of oh, the tiny mirrors? Yeah. I don't know. Now these hallways, feel pretty, I don't know, what's the right word, claustrophobic? The way it's lit, it feels very small. It's lit very dimly and it gives it like this creepy feeling. This is the room where two of the prostitutes were murdered and thrown out of the building window. This is where you got the stairs. Got an elevator right here, which we're gonna go in the elevator because that elevator is really cool. Earlier, I was telling you that Freddy Krueger himself has a room here and that room is actually right here. Room 310, Robert England. Let's see, what does that say? Best wishes and thanks for the hospitality, Robert England. That's freaking cool. Okay, I'll give you guys my best Freddy impersonation. Welcome to prime time. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I do love me Nightmare on Elm Street. Up here you got rooms four, 101 to 406 and 407 to 412. Okay, so up on the fourth floor, this is where we have the Anthony Hopkins suite, room 410. 
This is really reminding me of like The Shining a little bit. Oh God. What are you doing? So what would you do if you saw a ghost over there? What would I do if I saw a ghost over there? Yeah, over there. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> this place sure does have a lot of mirrors. So it seems like a lot of the rooms are named after famous people who have stayed here or just famous people in general. This hotel has definitely had its fair share of history when it comes to celebrities. Definitely. We're gonna show the elevator. This is a really awesome old school looking elevator. Go ahead. <laughs> Look at this elevator. If this doesn't give you spooky vibes, I'm not sure what would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that we've shown you most of the hotel, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back upstairs to our room. So far, what do you think about this hotel? When I walked in, it kind of had its own scent. I'm not trying to be biased, but an old lady scent in a way. Being in here, kind of thinking about how much time she must spend in here and how that's her chair. It feels like that's, I can't go over there. It feels like, like that's not mine. In the room, my emotions are kind of very extreme. <laughs> yeah, quick note, me and Lisette have been bickering a lot since we've been in this room. Yeah. When we leave this room, Honestly, we felt way better. The hotel itself, I think I said this before, it feels kind of claustrophobic walking through its halls. While we're in the room, there's times where I feel like I am more calm and I'm kind of at peace. And then other times where it spikes my anxiety for some reason. So what do you think? Do you think like later, It did sound like some... Did you hear that? Yeah. Guys, that didn't come from outside the room. That came from inside the room. We oh. thought we heard something from the bathroom, like a shuffle or something. Yeah, and then over here just now, it sounded like something tapped. Like maybe one of those... This was moved or something. Something, I don't it's, know. Yeah, it's something here. That was freaking weird. As soon as I was talking about how do you think we're going to feel like later out in the night, especially when it starts to get later towards 3 a.m. Looks like we might be in for a long night. While we try to ignore the noises we just heard coming from inside our room, Lisette is actually going to read some tarot cards and she's going to try to predict how our future of tonight is going to go. Let's see, show us your cards. So I'm going to be doing a very simple reading. I'm just going to be reading pictures of the cards. How I read is I interpret the pictures, how they relate to one another. And if I'm right, this should be a reading about how the rest of tonight will go. Yes, we can direct it towards that. Uh, I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> so as Lisette's getting the cards ready, Gerardo, how do you feel about this place? Ah, yes, very interesting. Well, I'm just going to slide you over here then. <laughs> I'm going to shuffle in threes. I want you to pick three numbers, one through ten. Seven. Seven for the first one? Yeah. Another one through ten. Uh, five. I need you to pick one of these stacks. The uh, left, or your right. Jesus. With these cards, I want you to pick one. This one. All right. Put these in any order you want. Okay, that's my order. Okay, now is it beginning to end or beginning to end? Okay, so uh, beginning to end. Okay. Let's see what the cards say. Okay, so what do these mean? So from this first card, it's a sense of curiosity. They're curious of one another, in a sense. The curiosity between us and the other side, even 
Safe to assume the other side is curious of us too. This middle one. I feel like there's someone here that wants to reach out that shouldn't be reaching out. They want to reach out, but they shouldn't be. There's these people holding them back from reaching out. And then this last one. This one to me shows someone who's been freed from something. They're free to go where they need to go now. So from these three cards, how I interpret these cards in relevance to you and how the night is gonna go, this curiosity you have will be met with another's curiosity. You guys are curious of each other. Someone wants to reach out to you. I don't know if that's good or bad. Now for this last card. What does, what's the significance of this last card? This last card is the overarching, just how this night will end, how you will feel after this night. Wow. I don't know why that makes me want to cry. <laughs> that card? But like a good cry. What What do you feel off this card? Because I see an explorer mm -hmm. going somewhere that's unknown. Someone will experience freedom and it's not going to be us. Just on another journey. On a journey into the unknown. At least that's how I see it. Let me know down in the comments. How, do you, how would you interpret these? Yeah. Let us know. We're curious. Well, all right then, I guess I'm not getting possessed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a relief. So last time at the San Carlos Hotel, there are some strange occurrences in the bathroom. Let's see if we catch anything this time around. No, just a plain bathroom. That <laughs> so last time at San Carlos, we left the hotel room. We left the camera recording just to see if anything would happen. But essentially we're gonna do the same thing again. Me and Lisette are gonna leave the hotel completely. We're just gonna go off and wander. We're gonna ask whatever entity, whatever spirits are in this room with us to move this rocking chair when we're gone. Okay, we got the GoPro courtesy of, once again, Alfredo. There we go. So we're gonna leave this GoPro recording that rocking chair over there. Let's just go ahead and get this recording. Okay. So, should be recording now. GoPro setup, again, to any entity that wants to interact with this rocking chair while we're gone, please feel free to do so. Do whatever you please to move this rocking chair. And with that being said, me and Lisette are getting the hell out of here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it feels weird in there. Yeah. 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 It's haunted here? This one. Apparently, yeah. Well, what's in there? There's a rock. Ghosts, chair. supposedly. That's what we heard last night. No woman died in here. Yeah, we heard just... something there last night. Really? This, like... Apparently, in that room right there, there was like two yeah, women that were found dead. Yeah, you guys take care of it. Yeah. Well, that was a Good nice call. interaction. Did you get that? <laughs> yeah. Dude, when the lady heard that the room was haunted, she was like, oh. Yeah, her eyes got so wide. And it looked hilarious. like they were leaving the room too, and she was sitting <laughs> by herself. <laughs> okay, poor woman. I'm sorry. To the lady that I unintentionally scared by saying her room was haunted, I'm so sorry. When we were leaving, she just looked so scared. I feel bad. I think that was so cool. We were just walking out. And we all just stopped to talk about how this place is haunted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know this place definitely has a reputation. Infamous.
Okay, so we're like right next to the woods. You know what I've always wanted to do? What? Recreate that scene from uh, the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> what scene? The one where they're just like running. The stuff we do in Flagstaff for fun, right? I'm totally putting that in the beginning as like part of the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've had our fun. Time to go back to the hotel. Okay, so from what we could see on the GoPro, the rocking chair didn't move, everything seems to be in place, but we won't know if officially until we get home and I edit the video. I guess we're just gonna wait until 3 a.m. to do some experiments, and uh, if we know anything from past experience, is that anything can happen at 3 a.m. Wish us luck, you guys. Fingers crossed. <laughs> you guys, I think I saw something over there. Oh, well, hello there. I'm the ghost of Spooky Nights. And I'm here to tell you that if you don't subscribe, I'm gonna haunt you in your dreams. So you better subscribe. I think he's serious. Uh, I'm stuck. <laughs> You're stuck? Yeah. All right, everyone. It is 3 a.m. Well, 3.30 a.m. And me and Lisette are gonna start doing some experiments. So why don't we dim the lights and get started with that? Okay, let's go. Okay guys, so we are gonna take Polaroids around the room to see if we capture any orbs, anything weird. We're gonna start off with the closet and work our way around the room till we get to the rocking chair. Okay, picture number one. Onto the bathroom. Picture number two. That's photograph number three. And we're gonna let that one develop as well. I guess just take a, one of me and we'll see if there's any orbs flying around me. <laughs> oh man, I think I came out looking stupid. <laughs> All right, my turn. So now we have all these developing. Okay, so what I think we're gonna do is we're actually gonna sit in the closet because people say they hear taps coming from there. So maybe if we go in there, something might happen. This closet's pretty small. This could be a very tight fit. It sets over there. She's just gonna be chilling on the bed. Do not mess with me. I will. Okay. Oh man, get in the closet at 3 a.m. This does not sound like a good idea. Okay, I'm currently in the closet as you can see. Let's just not make any noise and just listen. Until I hear something come from this closet, I'm not going to count it as anything. Okay. 
Let's get out of here. Okay, you ready for your turn? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. This is a really tight fit, you guys. I'm just going to stay in silence. Yeah? Everything okay? No, I heard something move over there. Heard something move? Yeah, like I'm not even kidding. Legit over there where the drone is, mm -hmm. it sounded like something was like pushed slightly mm -hmm. on the counter. Mm -hmm. It sounded like something was like pushed slightly mm -hmm. on the counter. Okay, I think this is as a good of time as any to try to do a spirit box session then. Lord knows we've had luck with that. <laughs> Okay guys, so we are now going to do a spirit box session. We're gonna look at the photos we took right after this. Also, just keep in mind, while me and Lissette are doing this, we're not gonna catch every little thing that might come through. If you hear something that we don't, please let us know in the comments down below. We might repeat a couple questions just because we might not catch it the first time. So that's the reason why we are repeating some questions. Let's get this started. Who is it that we are currently speaking to? What is your name? Are you the woman who lived in this also, room? Before we left. There you go. Just, there you go. Are you, are you the woman? Think about it. Think about it better this is your room right if around would you stare out the window onto the view better too good too good the view was too good. The view was too good. Is what the website says true? Apartment. Please. Apartment. About moving. Please moving. I mean, this technically was her apartment. Okay, where? Subway. To my wife. His wife. He has more. Did you die in this hotel? All had a morning. No, at night. At night. How are? How are you? Is there any way? 
you can let us know that you're in this room with us. A little, but not well. A little, but not well. I'm not sure it's hard. I'm not sure, I'm not it's, sure hard. it's hard. To vote. What would you need us to do to help you? Pick them up. Pick them Hi, up. Michael. I'm looking. You're looking? Looking at what? What are you looking at? People. Looking at people? Looking at us? Are you looking at us? How many of you are we talking to? Receive me. Hi. Hi. I heard I or five. Yeah, it was either I or five. Smart. Here's to five. This is my final question before we stop. Do you like having us in your room? Is that like a no? I don't like you in my room. Probably not. What should I? You ask. You're afraid. About three months. Holy shit! It's a girlfriend. Try. I am. I'm getting fucking chills. We are going to say goodbye now. I think it's a goodbye. Miss you one. Who miss you? Goodbye. Okay, we're going to say goodbye now. We're going to stop talking to you. Thank, you. thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. It was scary, but very cool in a sense. It was like a legit conversation, right? Like it mm -hmm. wasn't, it didn't feel scary like it did at San Carlos. Mm -hmm. I will say, like, this entire time, it might just be because the freaking yeah. thing, the chairs right here, but I've been getting a bunch of goosebumps throughout this entire thing. It really did feel like we are talking to somebody. So I am going to sit in this rocking chair. This is a really really eerie feeling <laughs> so with that spirit box session it definitely makes me feel like there is someone here we're definitely not alone in this room so what we're gonna do to try to get some kind of communication through with this spirit this entity one of us is going to stay in this room while the other goes into the bathroom and we're gonna ask this rocking chair to move maybe it'll work better if there's only one person in the room we're both going to individually do it. So I am going to walk into the bathroom. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. There is no one else in here. No one else physical, at least. It's just me. I would just like to say hello again. I know you talk to us through the spirit box, and we really appreciate that conversation i want to ask you to move the rocking chair if you can if you're still in here with us please move the rocking chair Go. I asked, I said hello again, but nothing happened. Okay, my turn, I guess. <laughs> the set is in the bathroom over there. I'm just gonna close it to whatever spirit entity that is in this room that once lived here. I ask you to please move the rocking chair. Make 
make me believe that you are real. I want to believe so bad that these things exist, that you exist. Prove it to me. Move the rocking chair. Thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing us in this room. We greatly appreciate it, and we've enjoyed your company. <sighs> Nothing. Nothing? No. I think it's hard for them. Like they said when they were talking to us, it's hard. Yeah. That was very scary to do. <laughs> we're going to be looking at the Polaroid pictures we took around the room earlier. So this is the first one we took in the closet. This is the photo taken from the bathroom. Here's the one of me. As you can see, nothing strange about this picture besides me. This one is the last one, right? Yeah, a lot happier before we did the spirit box. This is Lisette. I cannot tell you guys how many times I've seen that freaking mannequin across the street and it has scared the hell out of me. I literally thought someone was just like staring at us. It's been a very long night, but the sun is finally rising. And I think it's officially time we get out of here. I can actually see my breath. <laughs> that was the Hotel Monte Vista here in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'd have to say I had a really good experience here. We may not have had too much like activity caught on camera, but it was just fun overall. It was very much fun, especially regarding the tarot card reading earlier, how yeah. it blended in with all of this. In the end, even though we may have gotten some answers, we're still on this whole journey of like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> See, what I really wanted from Monte Vista is to prove to me that this stuff is real. I am a skeptic. When I was looking at the rocking chair, I was basically begging for it to move. Me like, too. just move, me prove too. it to me. I wanted it to move so bad. I was scared it would move, but I was like, please, please show me. Yeah. Overall, guys, really like this hotel. Is it haunted? I would say so, although we didn't really experience too much ourselves. I agree. This hotel definitely has history. I think it's definitely haunted still, but just not as intense as we thought. This has been Spooky Nights. Overnight with Spooky Nights at another haunted hotel. But again, thank you guys for watching and joining us on this very, very spooky night. Yeah, we very much hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> But with that being said, I have been Ryan Malik. I'm Lissette. We are Spooky Nights, and we hope you have a very spooky night as well. Peace out, guys. I'm keeping that in. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> I'm gonna keep that in. <laughs>
Get rid of all the bad juju. All the bad juju. All the bad juju. All the bad juju. I can Oh, sorry. Be gone. <laughs> all right. I think that's good enough. We ain't risking nothing. <laughs>